Welcome. This house looks very different to the last time we saw this together. Uh, walls are pink. Some people say brown. I think pl plaster is brown when it's wet and then it's pink when it's dry, like light pink. Some people say salmon. I don't think it's salmon either. Um, but welcome. Like this is the entrance to the house, which actually has changed significantly. If you go back and watch uh, video number one, when it was a tour of as it was, it's very different to what you can see behind me. However, one similarity is this here, which is my office, our studio, uh, which has been built. Now, there was a building here, well, building, there was a room here before. However, it was a bit too big. Um, and we felt if we kept it and then went open plan with the rest of it, it would be a bit pointless because it wouldn't be very open plan. But by removing, and you'll see over my shoulder when we go in there, by removing, I don't know, a meter, maybe a meter and a half, it's opened up that room massively. So let's go into the office, which at the moment is the warmest room of the house because you've got the little radiator on. Um, as you can see, plaster is, is drying. Uh, it's not 100%. That's just plaster, it's annoying, old school thing. And you can see really dark areas like here where you know there's just a thick layer of plaster. And in this case, there's no hard wall here, but you know having hard wall on a wall would make it dry like darker and slower. And that's just something to notice. As you go around the house, you'll see patches of darker plaster. It could be just that they haven't dried as quickly, but actually, you know, some of these areas, and it's interesting because some of these areas are structural areas and it gives a clue to what's going on behind it, are darker. So this will be my, my studio, my office, which is nice to see it, you know, in its form. I think it felt a lot smaller before the walls were on, which is weird. Um, but like, you know, you know, previously have a nice bay window desk here, cupboard here with the fish tank over my shoulder kind of radiators there, which is kind of like uh, a socket over there. And there'll be like a studio kind of here with two chairs, a table, nice background for filming and everything kind of set up ready for it to save me having to go back and forth. And this is acoustic sound wall, which, uh, you know, I don't know if it makes a difference, but we'll find out, you know, when I'm blasting Burner Boy. So let's go into the house, which is, um, yeah, there's some appliances here, uh, which is pretty big, uh, as you can see. And again, comparing it to before, the lights obviously aren't in. <clears throat> Second fix uh, is yet to happen, or kind of 1.8 fix, we're going to call it, because the sparkies, and this will happen on projects, by the way, have come and then come back and then come back and then come back. So it's not always first fix, second fix, done. The reality is it, it can be patchy, and you have to explain that to them that it might be the case. I mean, lots of them understand it, but you know, we had minus four conditions, and we'll show you the outside later where. We couldn't do brickwork and, you know, we're doing it today. About four, three or four weeks after we were meant to because of the minus conditions. Same with some of the windows. And that's supposed to be a floor to ceiling window over my shoulder, but we couldn't do it. You know what I said about dark patches in certain areas? All around here. Um, and that's, there's also brick behind this, engineering brick, because that is the pad stone. That is the pad stone that the steel, the Empire State Building steel uh, is sitting on. Now, if we walk towards here, you know, this space pretty much, actually more than a meter, about, two, about, about my span, what's that, 1.8 meters, a bit longer, you know, is what we've opened up. The structural wall used to sit, well, you can see it here, used to sit here, and there was the stairs and stuff here. So it's a good, yeah, 1.8 to 2 meters. So we've got this much space and create a big open plan thing, which obviously looks less open plan with, you know, John Lewis and Bosch appliances in. We put a TV socket up here as well for the TV. Uh, this is annoying because the TV is actually going to be here. Um, well, we're going to have to kind of put it here. So we we'll just have to have a TV big enough that it covers that, essentially. Uh, it was supposed to be further on, but, you know, it will just be a, a big TV, essentially. And... Yeah, when your sparky get dust strip outs, make sure they remove crap like this. I mean, what's the what's the point of that? You know, what's the point of that? And as we sort of sidestep along here and make our way through the maze of appliances, we are still in the same room. There'll be eight spotlights above us, which will I I mean it's pretty light in here already, which is interesting. I think it's the bathroom windows all brings a lot of light in. Eight spotlights in here, lighting it all up. That's going to be floor to ceiling, which, 
you know, will have an effect. Dining table over here and the kitchen, oh, well, if you like clean things and you hate mess and it gives you anxiety, turn away now. That is the kitchen, huh? pop your head in there. So we couldn't get a skip because of Christmas and all that, so thanks Jesus. Uh, we have to get one this week actually, so the plaster is coming back to get rid of all that and chuck it in there and wheel it out through here, which better be kept clean uh, because we didn't really have a choice, you know, because of the timing. Um, but fortunately, it's had two weeks to dry over Christmas, which has actually been really good. So it's worked out really well. The outside of the house, the bulk of it is totally exposed, as you'll see. And of course, it's bringing in a cold draft. Although it's a lot warmer in here than it has been. If you've been in this site, then it was absolutely freezing, like to the point of pain. But now, insulated plasterboards on all external walls, uh, insulation everywhere, it makes a difference, like definitely. And that room with the heating on is like, is actually fairly warm. So that, you know, they're building the brickwork. If you, if you pop your head out the window now, you can see them there, building the brickwork. So thanks James from Mackenberg for sorting this out, sending three of his best lads here to build the brickwork up so that when Craig from Mainty comes next week, the roof can just go on in a day, Sparky's in, plumber's in, borders in, boom, 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 but kitchen in, because I need the work, like that is just going to be boom, like X after X after, it, so many things are happening. Um, things are going to go wrong, that's life. But yeah, it's unfortunate we've had to pile it all into that week and then the flooring's going down, the skirtings are going and architraves are going in. It's, yeah, there's a lot happening. Uh, integrated fridge freezer, as you can see, uh, doesn't say much information about it. I got it on a cheeky little auction, got a Bosch oven in there, got an AEG induction hob with downdraft extractor, John Lewis washing machine. So decent, uh, hopefully trustworthy brands. So you see some tubs of paint here because I am gonna be mist coating today uh, and or this week. So let's take a look upstairs. So let me just do a Holmes under the hammer, fake looking around thing. You know what they do on like, ooh, hmm, hmm. Yeah, my friends have been on Holmes under the hammer. I've seen you doing this, hmm, yeah, ooh. So, there's no thingy here, banister, etc. We're gonna have Scandinavian wood going from the top up to here to form the balustrade. And I think landings are a waste of space, right? Like, what can you do with them? However, nice big space. We also left space for someone maybe, you know, if we sell it in X many years to do a loft conversion or us, because everyone on the street's done it, so easy peasy. Uh, the corner there, I'm thinking little shelves with plants and bits down them. That look really nice because we have such a, yeah, such a, if, if you stay there, you can see, you know, it's, it's a sort of six foot radius almost here. Might as well make some use of it, put a plant there, loft access there for storage, of course, for all my clothes and my shoes. So if we go back a little bit, we are in the bathroom. Now, we were hoping to remove this chimney breast, but it's still here, unless you can Photoshop it out. And it is what it is. It's it's just an absolute behemoth. It's so badly made. It's just it, it's such a bodge. The only real way to get rid of it is to take the whole stack out and shed with next door, and it's not happening. So what we're gonna do, and this is a smart idea. There's gonna be a base in here, about a meter long, which good. It fits from IKEA with a nice stone work basin and a nice stone work top as well. So stone basin from Lusso. Beautiful stuff. There's gonna be a mirror here, right? So this is gonna be all built up. Now what's gonna happen is that mirror is gonna have a thing, you push it, like a cupboard, it opens up, and then inside you have this storage. Now it's not a lot, because these have to stay, but at least you can get in and take stuff. And I think it's a better use than just blocking it up. It's not hard to do, it's a nice frame with a chippy, make the door, nice kitchen hinges, whatever, soft, open, you know, whatever, and then plaster it around it. You know, it, it's, it's something practical. In a refurb, you may not even do that because of the extra cost and time, but we're living it, so we will. Uh, sink will go here, plumbing, easy peasy, chased in, out, waste out. Toilet's gonna go here, and I will show a floor plan on the screen now so you know where we're walking, so basin, toilet, towel rad, SC Duncan, great plumbers, and here is going to be the tile-in walk-in shower, 1.2 meters long by about eh, eight, 900 wide, Everything's gonna be in here, insulated plasterboard, rainfall coming out, rainfall, 
And then here is going to be the freestanding bath to look out at the frosted window. <laughs> yeah, I wish maybe half it wasn't frosted, but yeah, I suppose it's what you should do. And uh, if you pop your head out there, you can see what the brickies are doing. So we are now in, I'll just close that so we can hear. We're now in the, well, what was supposed to be the smallest bedroom, but if you wait there, let me just do a marathon to the other end of it. Like it's, it's huge. We did not expect it to be this big. Um, I mean, it's big enough that there will be a double bed from end to end here, and there's a socket for that over there. So a nice double bed taking up this, which will be the spare bedroom, um, guest bedroom, but also this will be my wife's office. So nice big radiator here. And also you may notice the pipes are coming out of the wall. Normally that costs extra, but because we had chimney breasts here, the plumber just ran them in the chimney breast, lagged them, which is important. A couple of quid to do that. And it saves money when you're heating. And we get them coming out of the wall, so floating rads, which I love. Uh, I hate when rads come out the floor. Yeah, love him. And uh, thanks structural engineer, um, bit of an idiot, I must say, uh, and, I t and I let him know that. Steel, the window used to be here. How are you putting a steel resting on a window? Hmm, holding up a chimney breast, hmm. Okay, so the window had to be made smaller by, in my opinion, a significant amount. Look at this, right? Like uh, by a significant amount. So it's this, which is, you know, not the end of the world. I mean, you can still see the garden. It's still a lovely sort of view, but there's meant to be a much bigger window here. Uh, and yeah, it doesn't open fully because there's a guttering as well. But anyways, who needs big windows opening? Uh, and also building regs came over and approved everything as well. We've got fire exit windows at the front. Now this is insulated plasterboard as well, 30 mil in that case. If we come out here and we walk straight along, we now go into the main bedroom, which again, I like this kind of entrance. It just creates something a bit grand. If we have the plants there, plant there, you know, this area here is just nice. Thinking space, you can call it, right? Um, you know, if it was a HMO, you'd probably make that room, I don't know, you'd maximize space. You can't rent landing, right? You can rent a room. But here, we're living in, so it's totally different. Uh, now, this door is actually original-ish. There used to be a weird cross through here. I remember us knocking everything down. The, the real door was over there, but yeah, the door was pretty much here. So if we come in, this is the, the main room. Uh, and again, it's bigger than it sort of feels and it's bigger than we thought. Uh, you know, king size bed is gonna be here. You can see the two sockets. You know, we are gonna have a built-in wardrobe where you're kind of standing now, um, which I need to measure today as well, which will pretty much go from here all the way to there. So about three-ish meters long, maybe a little bit longer. Nice built-in, nice, uh, nice kind of cupboard doors, big handles, big black mat handles to match the handles on the doors. Uh, and sockets is an important thing to consider because I put those two next to the bed. There's one there because I know there's going to be a mirror on this wardrobe when people need their hair straighteners and whatever. It can go in there next to the cupboard. It makes sense. And of course, two by the bed is a standard thing in a room like this. Um, those two are probably going to be USB-C and USB sockets. Radiator. Now I looked at this room and said, we've got a wardrobe. Okay, we've got a wall there. Okay. We've got a bed there. I don't really want to bring that out and reduce the walk space. What about the space under the window? And thankfully, it just about fits um, a radiator here. We're going to move these pipes in a little bit just to make room for the cupboard. But it's going to be a nice, long, slim, low-hung radiator there which makes sense because otherwise you've got a window underneath a window space that's just being used for what for nothing so you know and you know logically whatever radiators tend to go under windows it just makes sense here and it will look so nice to have the symmetrical lines coming down with the radiator and then with the built-in wardrobe and again you can see places where the plaster is darker and that's where the join is from breeze block to old wall, etc., etc., And there was some, I can't remember what it was, but there was something here. It might be the chase, I can't remember. But 
you'll see pictures of this or videos of this from the last um, ones we've done and you will notice what was there beforehand and you can see the clues from the plaster. So people, this is a tour of the house. There'll be some footage of what's happening at the back and what's happening around the house. But we are, I would say, when Craig comes, there's going to be a lot done, like seven different guys doing all sorts of stuff. That week is pretty much like crunch week. Once that's done, you know, we're pretty much there. Bathroom and kitchen should be in then, flooring will be in then, it'll be mist coated, first coated. Then the rads need to go in, boiler needs to go in, uh, electrical finish, you know, touching up the paint, blah, blah, blah. You know, snags, things like that. We're pretty much there, you know, in, at that point. So really, two more weeks, we should be at a really, really good stage if everything goes to plan. And then after that, it's moving stuff in slowly and getting stuff up the stairs and, you know, the bed's coming next week, so I'll leave Craig to, to deal with that. You know, so we're pretty much there. And uh, yeah, I'm quite grateful that Christmas came at this period, like I said, for the plaster to dry, because if it didn't, I mean, we'd pretty much be sort of waiting around. Might be able to do some skirting and architrave, um, but we'd be waiting around. It's quite good that it came. The only issue is heating. So my recommendation is you don't want to be too hot for plaster, but you want, you know, you want some airflow and you want something going on in the house. And we have the back of the house open. So people, make sure you hit subscribe, hit like, and I'll see you on the next tour, which will be when it's all go and everything's happened. And maybe there's some flooring down, maybe there's some architraves on. Who knows? I'll see you then.